Hey, Dimitri, hey, congratulations for jujitsu. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hey, so um, where do you, I know you come up with a lot of these different types of stories, but where did you come up with this specific martial arts film tied with sci-fi? Well, after I'd uh, delivered Kickboxer Retaliation, I was sitting with a couple friends, and there was a suggestion from one of them um, that I might consider science fiction martial arts. And I thought to myself, well, what do you mean, uh, like Universal Soldier? I mean, really, if you look at a lot of the Marvel movies nowadays, you'll see that almost all of the uh, people are practicing martial arts. So, um, I, you know, I thought to myself, you know, that's not a bad idea. So I sat down with my writing partner and I said, why don't we go ahead and write a uh, comic book? And so uh, just so that I could see it and I could see the storyboard, so to speak, uh, I'm not into comic books in terms of being a writer for them. And so I just wanted to see if I could see a movie, you know, so I did that. And as soon as I, uh, I finished it, I thought, wow, this could be a really cool film. Uh, and I, you know, it was really under the auspices of coming up with an unbeatable foe, somebody who couldn't be killed and, uh, putting them up against a team of martial artists, uh, and coming up with a, a kind of a background story that has been around, let's say for several thousand years. And that's how we ended up with Jiu-Jitsu. Wow. Now the comic book transitions, was that from the storyboards that you guys actually created? That's no, uh, those were specifically uh, done because of the film itself. So we used uh, the film as an inspiration for it. And then uh, I got a comic book. Uh, I actually got an artist to draw up all those transitions. And that was primarily to keep the audience into what we were doing and to let them know that this is kind of uh, a fantastic story. Pardon me, let me turn this off. Now, why, I, I know uh, you, you, you filmed in Southeast Asia quite a lot. Why did you want to use the Myanmar um, Burma setting um, for it, but you filmed in um, Cyprus? Well, I, Myanmar has the Valley of the Temples, which is uh, over a thousand temples. And with it, I believe, comes an awful lot of folklore. Uh, the genesis of our story is about uh, the fact that jiu-jitsu really doesn't have an origin. If you research jiu-jitsu, you'll see that uh, there's no real origin to it, unlike kung fu and uh, karate. So perhaps it came from uh, Japan, perhaps it came from India. Um, it's several thousand years old, that's a fact, uh, but you really can't pinpoint it. And with that in mind, I, I thought to myself, well, there's a comet that goes through our solar system every six years, and it opens up a portal uh, in one of these uh, temples and out steps um, an alien. And if you look at the drawings inside the temple, you'll see uh, that this alien brought jujitsu to the planet. So tell us more about this alien Brax that you actually developed. Tell, tell us where, how you actually developed his look, especially his, his helmet, his face mask, which was quite intriguing. Well, thank you. Um, you know, as a kid, I grew up watching science fiction films on TV and really old science fiction films because there were things like Thriller on uh, TV and you'd watch it on the weekends. And so they played... Uh, a lot, one of my favorites is the original The Day the Earth Stood Still. And if you take a look at that robot who is supposed to come and de destroy the Earth, um, he was the inspiration for me for this particular Brax because he doesn't really have a face. And that face uh, kind of makes it even more terrifying, you know. Um, and then I really loved uh, the original Alien. And the fellow who designed the original look for the alien is a fellow by the name of Geiger. And so the inspiration was uh, the day the earth stood still uh, drawn by Geiger. So that's really where I came up with that. So the face that actually was portrayed, well, somewhat of a face that was portrayed in the film, was that based off of someone's face or was this completely computer generated? Um, the expressions came from someone's face, but I had a wonderful uh, 
visual effects artist that r really did an incredible job of that. So, uh, I, uh, you know, he, he really uh, took uh, what I had in my imagination and uh, put it up on screen. So I thought uh, he did a wonderful job at that. So the costume armor in, in the film, that was actually cloth just to make it more maneuverable for uh, Ryan Turan? Yeah, it was uh, the costume armor itself uh, was, was built uh, by a, sp a special effects team uh, that does specifically just that. So they make armor that can be uh, movable. However, you know, we shot it uh, in the summertime and the poor guy, he must have gone through about a gallon of water a day just to try to stay alive, you know. So we had to keep him really well hydrated, believe me. <laughs> so you, you, you must have put Ryan through um, quite a bit uh, throughout, throughout the entire production. So he, he was a very good sport then. He was. I mean, Ryan has done doubling for Aquaman. He's done doubling for Thor. He's a very big guy, and uh, he's from Australia, but he's a very jovial guy. He's the kind of guy that always comes up with some wonderful uh, ideas of his own and adds a lot of creativity to the martial arts. And he's an exceptional martial artist. Wow. What about the uh, um, rest of your cast that you actually brought in? Because, uh, because it seems like everyone there of, 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 the, of the eight, you know, knew, knew, knew what they're do actually doing. Well, look, <clears throat> again, growing up with wonderful martial arts films and enjoying them myself as a kid, starting, of course, with Bruce Lee, um, you can't make a martial arts film without an authentic martial artist in the center of the piece. I, I think the audience expects it, and I think that that's where they get their joy and enthusiasm and, and watching all this athleticism, okay? So you've got Lan Moosey, who is the lead, and he's, he's a six degree jujitsu master, a real jujitsu master. You've got uh, Tony Jaw, who he is in a class uh, by himself, uh, you know, with Ong Bak, the Thai warrior, is the beginning of his career, and then on and on, the kind of things he can do on screen to just blow your mind. You've got Juju Chan, who is uh, from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and an exceptional martial artist herself. And so, uh, and then I brought over a Thai stunt team that I've used in both Kickboxer Vengeance and Kickboxer Retaliation. And so they round out the team. Uh, you mentioned Ryan. Um, and then, you know, in the core, you know, we ended up with a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful actor. Um, and he's the one that, that goes ahead and kind of tells the story. <laughs> and that's of course, Nick, that's of course Nick Cage. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's one of the things that I guess a lot of people don't know is that Nick, Nick Cage actually does know what he's doing is because um, from what I guess from my, what I read, he, he actually knows jujitsu, right? He does. He trained with, uh, in Brazilian jujitsu with some of the best uh, martial artists in the world and he's in wonderful shape. Uh, but in addition to that, he, he embraces the genre and he embraces genre in general. He's done some uh, amazing work in action as you know, um, he's an Academy Award winner um, and he embraces genre films and he creates a kind of a heart for the film because he really tells the background of the story. He tells exposition, uh, which is really difficult to, uh, to sell unless you've got a wonderful actor. And, and how much stunt did he actually, how much of his own work did he actually do on, on set um, for, for himself? A considerable amount. Uh, Nick uh, got off the plane and he sat down with me and spent several hours discussing character and stuff. And the very first thing he wanted to do after that is he wanted to go and train with the stunt guys. And I said to him, I said, come on. I said, don't you want to get over your goes? Let's get right to it. And uh, so I would say the majority uh, of his work is him. And we just filled in the dangerous stuff for him and, and doubled him in some of the dangerous stuff. Excellent. One of the most fascinating things in your film was the camera work when they were fighting the U.S. soldiers. Um, you know, sort of like the GoPro and one-shot sequences. Could you talk more about that? Because that, that was a lovely addition. Well, thank you so much. Actually, I, I think they wish it, they were GoPro sequences, but they weren't. They were stripped-down cameras that were very heavy. <clears throat> and 
the only people that really knew the choreography were the stunt coordinator. And so uh, like I did in Kickboxer Retaliation, I like to shoot oneers. And oneers, uh, for people who don't know, is where you take one camera and you pursue uh, uh, the particular character in front of you all the way through several minutes of fighting uh, and watch them themselves without doubles uh, do all these uh, athletic uh, martial arts sequences. And so the camera people couldn't possibly follow them as well as the stunt coordinator. And so what we did is we strapped the camera to the stunt coordinator, uh, who's a wonderful guy from Thailand by the name of Jim. And he's the one that actually followed these guys. There was one sequence where Tony Jaw leaps over rooftop, okay? And so the only way to do that effectively with our stunt coordinator carrying a 40 pound camera was to strap the stunt coordinator onto a, uh, a uh, crane so that he wouldn't go flying off the roof himself. So um, we managed to pull that off uh, really well. And I think the audience will enjoy that a lot. I, 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 I certainly did. And um, you, you like to work with Elaine um, um, quite, quite a bit uh, through the kickboxer series and into jiu-jitsu. What about him that uh, makes him such a lead star? Well, I think, again, with martial arts, uh, you need to have a true martial artist in the center uh, that is authentic and can pull off authentic sequences without tricks, okay? Elan uh, is six foot one. He weighs 205 pounds. He can do a front aerial, a back aerial, and he can run up the side of the wall. And so if you know anything about physics, that's really, really hard to do It's at uh, 205 pounds. So he's incredibly athletic. Um, he's the kind of guy that I'll, I'll put him through a 12 hour day uh, where we're doing some really complicated sequences as you saw. And at the end of the day, he'll look at me and he'll say, I think I can go for another five or six hours. You know what else? I mean, he's just, he's just a terrific guy. Is, is there still other martial artists, actors that you, that's on your wish list that you want to work with? Sure. Um, I would love to do something with Donnie Yen. I'd love to do something with uh, Jackie Chan. I'd love to do something with uh, Scott Atkins, Michael Jai White, and perhaps with Jiu Jitsu too, because we got to put a, a whole team together. And already I've had several, uh, studios and uh, uh, foreign sales companies come to me and want me to do jujitsu too. And so I'm considering that uh, highly right now. Well, good, great to know that there is a sequel. But speaking of sequels, you're going to wrap up uh, pretty soon uh, Kickboxer Armageddon. Um, talk about where the status of that is actually heading. Well, actually, I wrote Kickboxer Armageddon a few years ago, and I had broken it down. I was ready to make it. Um, but, but what needed to happen was the kickboxer, uh, relaunch movies, kickboxer vengeance and kickboxer retaliation needed to proliferate around the world. It was a little too soon. So I waited until everybody got an opportunity to watch those films. And, uh, recently as of in the last six months, uh, the numbers, uh, both those films are on Netflix and the kickboxer franchise was bought by Netflix for streaming. And so the numbers are going up uh, in terms of how many people are following these movies right now. So now is a perfect time to bring uh, the third uh, movie into the fray. Excellent. And um, just, just to wrap it up, I, as I'm, I'm actually Thai, so I'm actually very grateful that you actually are uh, supportive of the Thai, Thai movie industry with, with your kickboxing and trying to um, basically use Southeast Asian cultures. So um, what, what about the, Thai, the Thais that you, you love about uh, working along with them? Look, I've got a wonderful Thai team. I started with them. Uh, there's nothing like these guys. Um, I started with them with Kickboxer Vengeance. Uh, I brought the same team over to build the set for me uh, for uh, uh, jujitsu. Um, I've got the same stunt team that I that I worked originally in uh, Kickboxer Vengeance, and there's nothing like them. I mean, you know, the the, the way uh, they they fight and the choreography that they use, which is Muay Thai based, but it's a little different. It's not quite your normal approach to fight sequences. You know, they have a little different skew 
and it's it's really beautiful to watch. In a, in addition to the fact that it's highly aggressive, and uh, they just have a work ethic that just blows my mind. So this is my team, and uh, I'm glad you're Ty, and they're going to come with me uh, to as many movies as they want to work with me on. So, well, I look I look forward on uh, speaking with you again. Hopefully, with the the, ne the next kickboxer. So. So I'll, I'll, I guess I'll leave you with Kapun Kap, Sawadee Kap. Yeah, Kapun Kap. Thank you so much, Gig, for your time. Hey, thank you. Bye now. Bye-bye.